What's up, ACF? Dude, you <laughs> she jittered on that one, too. Second time we got JP to jiggle on both those startups. Um, we're super honored today to have JP here with us in the podcast studio. JP, this is your first time. Um, and it's we're super blessed to have you here. For those of you who don't know him, I'll just give you a little background background form. JP is one of our elders of the church. And how long have you been an elder for? 2013. Whoa, so that's seven years. Yeah. That's like a third of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's here so old. Yeah. <laughs> just, how old are you now? I got to know. 38. 30, oh, you're young. <clears throat> 38, you're young. Yeah. yeah. 38, yeah. yeah. I was born in the 80s. Whoa. I was born in like the 90s. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, we have guys that were born in the 60s and 70s and maybe, maybe the even 40s. 40s yeah, and... I think we got some people born in the 40s in our body. Yeah, That's 30s. crazy. See how much life and change yeah. they've seen. Anyways, I got distracted. JP's one of our elders. He's been an elder here since 2013, you said? Yep. 2001, there was. No, 13, you're right. 2013. Um, so, been here for seven years as an elder. Yep. And JP's also incredibly busy and hard to get. You might be like, how come I don't see this guy around a ton? Well, JP also is one of the fire captains for Medford. And what's your district again? It's Medford Fire Department. Uh, oh, there's no district number? There's no district. Well, Oh, that's true. It is. It's just the city department. We actually contract with Fire District 2, but we are the city of Medford Fire Department. Okay, sweet. <clears throat> that's super cool. And the cool thing is, is his fire department that he works out of is right next to this huge building with giant staircases. And when JP was trying to help me get in shape, he had me run up the staircases, 11 stories, wearing firefighter gear. I almost died, but it was great. JP, yeah. I'm so thankful for that. He did a great job. I'm in better shape now because of <laughs> yeah. you. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, so super thankful to have you here. and Super glad to be here. Yeah, and we're, we're talking about house churches. In fact, I think we're kicking off a little new series on podcasts that's just totally geared towards house churches because people got questions. How do you do it? How do you set it up? Yeah. How do you lead it? And so today we're talking about one that's probably weighing heavily on some people's minds, maybe not so much on others, but we're talking about how do you do a house church in the midst of kind of COVID-19 and phase one and Mm -hmm. uh, is it safe? Are we all going to die? Is it, you know, and I I know some of you right now, you might just turn this off or you may scoff or you may disagree and we understand in our church, there's lots of different perspectives. But I think uh, for some of us who maybe, if there is someone who's a little more afraid, I think it could bring a lot of peace just talking through it and like what is the reality of what we're doing here and what we're going through. And so anyways, JP, take us away, man. All righty. <clears throat> well, thanks, Cody, for uh, having me here. Uh, super excited to do that. I am uh, trying to do my best to educate myself and with the job that we do, we've been dealing with it for the last couple of months. I am no expert um, in the fire service uh, we consider ourselves knowledgeable about a lot of things, um, from fires to EMS and the whole gamut of everything else people call us, but we are not usually experts on everything. So I do like to say that I'm not the expert. Um, you like the pastor of the medical field, by the way. <laughs> pastor of the medical field. So I always tell people, like, the general teaching pastor yeah. knows something about everything, but he's not like an eschatologist or, you know, yeah. like some focused doctrinal teacher. Yeah. So yeah, you could, you could put it that way. I've, I've known a little bit about a lot of things, and uh, so I've got a little bit of information. And uh, you know, the fire department has been dealing with this for you know since February. Um, some departments earlier into January, uh, depending on where you were in the United States, and as the coronavirus came into the United States. But uh, our department's been dealing with it for the last couple of months, and so the things that we've done, the things that we've prepared, the things that we've learned, um, and it's changing. Um, yeah. from day one, you know, back in February. And as we progressively learned about it, we learned more in March and then more in April and more in May. By the way, I heard <clears> that it doesn't live on surfaces like they originally thought. Um, Is that true? It doesn't live on surfaces. As far as the literature that I've read, it doesn't live on surfaces as long as they thought it did. It still will live on certain surfaces. So, But it won't live like nine days on this counter if you sneeze no, on it or something. No. Okay. No. Sweet. Yeah. That's good to know. But you Let's still need to, one. like, you know, the microphones after we're done with them, we I probably do should wipe, wipe them down, down and, and your your stuff headphones. like that. I do. Yeah, exactly. I wipe all of it down. Yeah. So that type of stuff, mm-hmm. you know, of, of my close contact, you know, you can see Cody and I are, are socially distancing. We're at that six feet or greater of uh, that. So we're not wearing our masks so we can communicate and you guys can hear us. Um, but yeah, there probably will be, you know, if I had COVID-19 or the coronavirus and I was spitting on this mat or on this mic, 
um, and we did not clean it afterwards, you know, and then the next person that used it, if their mouth got too close or, you know, they touched it, they could also put that in their mouth and their hands and their nose or eyes if they're touching themselves. So, um, <clears throat> that's Mark's mic, by the way. So that's Mark's mic. So if perfect. Sick, we're going to let him know who did it, <laughs> who did it. So, um, but yeah, we do know a lot about a little thing, a little about a lot of things. And so hopefully we can help, uh, clear some things up and make some people feel a little bit more comfortable about what's going on and then kind of give you a little overview of kind of what we're looking at for the home churches. And, uh, you know, we miss the body. Uh, my wife and I yeah. miss the body. We get to, you know, communicate or zoom or FaceTime or talk to different people. And, you know, we've ran into people at the grocery store and out and about in town, uh, which has been great, but yeah. we are looking forward to the day to come back to church. Um, and I think that that day is, is coming sooner than later, but, uh, the home churches right now is, is gives us that opportunity to, um, fellowship with, you know, members of the community, uh, members of our church and, uh, kind of have that relationship back that we're missing. You know, some of us, I get it, I go to work, you know, I still have to go work my 24 hour shift. So I get that interaction with the guys I work with every day, um, where some people have been isolated for months. Um, yeah. <clears throat> You know, I, I think of my mom. My mom had heart surgery about a year ago, and, you know, we've kind of kept her isolated because she is, um, you know, 70 years old and has, you know, the history and immunocompromised and health conditions and different things. And so she's one of the um, people that, uh, you know, we're, we're concerned about. So we want to make sure that uh, we take care of that population, the immunocompromised or uh, the elderly population. Um, that have different health issues going on that have been affected by the coronavirus or COVID-19, depending on, you know, who you listen to or who who says what it is. But uh, it's it's been an interesting uh, time, and uh, we're hoping and praying that uh, yeah. we can get back to the fellowship and uh, get everybody taken care of. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Yeah. Getting back together and. <clears throat> I don't want to let too much out of the bag, but we have been doing some renovations in the foyer, and you'll be seeing some pictures trickling around Facebook eventually from Jill yeah. photographing some of it, and we're just excited to be back together as a whole body, and um, we're freshening up the building, getting things ready, thinking of you guys, and super excited. I squeezed the words Jesus into there somewhere. <laughs> You're going to find them. I did not take the cross off the wall, just in case that's where everyone's mind went. Uh, yeah. I did not. But the words Jesus will be up in our church building somewhere. I'm super excited for that. Um, but talk to us about kind of our community, our area, because <clears throat> I think sometimes when people think we're making decisions, they feel like we're looking at the news of what's going on in America, COVID-19. And I was mm -hmm. just talking to someone recently. I said, you know, honestly, um, a lot of the information we're getting is what's going on in our community. Yes. And I know in our community, we've tested over something like 6,000 people, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And how many cases do we currently have? Uh, we currently, as of this morning, uh, 830 was the last post that I read, was 65 cases. Okay. And 46 I'd recovered? I think it was up to 49 recovered. Praise the Let Lord. me pull up that data. I don't want to quote wrong data, and I don't have it memorized, so... You give me just a second. Give you a second. Uh, my computer, Jackson County, 65 cases as of 8:30 this morning. 49 cases recovered. That's awesome. Um, and of that, just so you know, 64 of the 65 are positive test um, that the yeah. test is, and then they have presumptive test is usually somebody that has the symptoms that the test results aren't back yet, um, but they were or had contact with somebody that had. Uh, COVID-19. So sometimes you'll see that and sometimes that's confusing to people is that, you know, it says that with the current case is for Jackson County is 65, but the positive test is 64. They're yeah. throwing in the presumptive cases. Because um, they're waiting for the <clears throat> test results. Mm -hmm, yeah. And they're, they're thinking that it's going to be that. And we have had 6,300 negative tests uh, in our county. Praise the Lord. Now. So I'm super thankful the hospitals here have done such a great job with it. So we got, there's, there's been zero deaths in our county. Zero deaths in our county, That's yes. That's so cool. So we got about 15 people who are sick with COVID-19 right now, and then one they're waiting on a test for. Yes. So that's about 16 people in our community. That's up from it was like even just a week and a half ago. It was just 47 cases with 46 recovered. Yeah. The last time you and I talked. Yeah, so we entered phase one on May 15th, uh, which will be two weeks tomorrow. And um, 
we entered that in, which had opened up a lot of businesses, opened up yeah. gatherings of 25, opened up restaurants, um, still recommending that you do social distancing, still recommending that you wash your hands for 20 seconds. You don't touch your face. You don't touch your mouth, your nose, your eyes. Um, you still are, are doing the, you know, the social distancing and the recommendations from the CDC <clears throat> of all of those different things. But uh, we have seen an increase in the last two weeks. Um, not a huge increase like thousands, but, you know, that's uh, gone up about 15 cases in the last two weeks. Um, and it'll be interesting to see. We have to stay in phase one for a minimum of 21 days. Um, and then after 21 days, the county can put in a, an appeal to go to phase two. And, uh, awesome. and so we'll see what that is. And that they're still trying to figure out all this stuff. Like I said earlier, is things are, we're learning things as we go. You know, this virus was, <clears throat> you know, found out in the very end of 2019. And uh, every month we're learning more things. Data is coming out, research is being done, and we're, we're learning more and more and more. You know, this isn't a virus. Um, the COVID-19 isn't a virus. The coronavirus has been around for a while, but the COVID-19 is a different strand that's you know only been around for like six to seven months right now. So every month we're learning more. So hopefully when we go to phase two, uh, in the near future, we will know, you know, is it going to be gatherings of 50? Is it gatherings of a hundred? Yeah. Um, you know, they're working on all that stuff and, you know, you may see stuff at written out there that says, you know, 50 or it says a hundred and, and that, and, you know, we can put in, you know, after 21 days to go to phase two, <clears throat> but right now we're currently in phase one and, uh, we do have active cases in our County. Um, and they are been isolated and they've got different things. So they take their temperature twice a day. They have got to be, you know, symptom free for 72 hours, um, most likely isolated for 14 days. Um, so you, you know, if you're one of those people that are out there that, you know, have tested positive, you're going to be working with, you know, your doctor with Jackson County, um, health and probably with the, the state of, you know, all the things that you need to do to make sure that we isolate you, keep things clean, keep you in a way so we don't have huge spreads of this going through our county. Yeah. Um, and I know that brings <clears throat> up a lot of kind of different perspective. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of different perspective on this note as a nation, um, as a community, even as a church. And um, <clears throat> if it encourages you guys, we've we really feel like this is the Lord leading us to house churches. Yeah. We clearly believe that. I remember being on a walk and just praying and asking the Lord, rise it kind of, and the Lord just like met me and downloaded and we got together as elders and we sat down and we talked it through. And yeah. um, we really believe because even if I hate saying it, you know, we needed house churches regardless. That's the reality. Now I think COVID-19 in some ways has driven our church to take that stance to be like, whoa, because I don't know how it's worked for you guys. But for me, I've realized I need deep, genuine, meaningful relationship in my life. Like, I don't get me wrong. I love the Sunday morning service. I want the Sunday morning service. It's a part of it. We're going to get back to it. But there was a part of me that realized I don't have enough deep connection with people where I'm, I'm walking in the light and I'm open and they're open and we're doing life together. And my life is so busy and so hectic. I fill it with so many other things. I can miss out on things that matter and things that change me. And so yeah. that's our goal moving towards house churches is to create those kind of connections. And we plan on having big church again. And we plan on having 350 people <clears throat> back, packed into that building and children's ministry, yeah. all those things. We look forward to getting back to it. Um, but as we're seeking to do that in a manner that is wise, glorifying to God, peaceable to our community and to our church body. This is where we're at. Um, and, and I'm super excited for it. Yeah. And one thing that I would add to the house churches, home churches is to, you know, most of us already have a core group of friends and, you know, um, family, you know, that either go to church together or are, are doing life together, you know, encourage you to, you know, get together yeah. with those groups, get you know, your friends. get your friends together. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, 10 random people from church that you have never met. And, you know, maybe those 10 random people come, you guys come the bestest friends and your lifelong friends for the rest of your life. But you, we're already doing life. You're already um, getting together with people out in the community. Um, you already have your, <clears throat> excuse me, your friend groups, um, different groups from church and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, we're still missing that fellowship, that, you know, getting together, you know, aspect. A lot of people, you know, are, are nervous about that and, and scared about that, but it's going out there and, and doing that. It's, you know, 
opening up your home, inviting your friends, inviting, you know, um, a lot of people already had been in Bible studies or doing different things with different people in the community yeah. is inviting them over and, and do church together. Um, you know, watch the service together, you know, yeah. do life together, plan different events. Uh, I know that you love potlucks, so to make sure that they have potlucks. Hey, you know what? So, I said this is the <clears throat> one time we can have potlucks as a church. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, <laughs> it's usually just looking for one, one person to open up their house and invite their friends over. And, you know, if you got a house that you can get four or five people or you got a house that you can put 20 people. And yeah. I'd encourage you to do that because if we see a huge um, resurgence of the COVID-19 into the county, this may be a way for us to still have that fellowship. You know, if yeah. say that we start church in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, wherever it is of where we start church back up. And all of a sudden, you know, October of next or well, it'd be next October of this year, of 2020. <clears throat> and uh, we have... 10,000 cases in our county yeah. and uh, we kind of go back into a lockdown you or they say you know small groups of of 10 you know not the 25 but back to the 10 <clears throat> yeah and uh you have these small churches these ho- home churches already there you're already inviting your friends it makes it just so much easier to continue that fellowship that we've all missed yeah um, <clears throat> which is one thing I, I would encourage you know as we take the next couple of weeks is to you know, is to maybe find that group of friends that you have, you know, that you're already communicating on the phone, you're already doing life with, you know, the the people that you, your kids hang out with or whatever, and invite your, you invite them to come over and watch church together and just do church together, you know, and it doesn't have to be Sunday morning. Yeah. You know, if church comes out on Saturday night and Saturday night works great for you. For me, you know, I work on a nine week rotation. So every out of a nine week period, I'm going to miss three Sundays or, yeah. and so that's why or some three people, Wednesdays or, or three Wednesdays, you're, you're going to see that. It's just how my schedule uh, rotates. Um, so maybe on a Monday night works really good. And, you know, I hang out with other firemen and it maybe works better for all of us to meet on a Monday night. Yeah. And uh, we do that. And uh, it's, it's something that you can do, yeah. you know, that. And I think that it, uh, it gives us an opportunity um, to continue to build those and do life with yeah. the guys. And then as we come back, to, you know, to church, you know, we've been doing life and those relationships and friendships have continued to grow. And uh, we just as I feel and this was just something that was brought to me as as we grow closer to the Lord, um, kind of, you can put it as a triangle, you know, as you grow closer to the Lord and your friends go closer to the Lord, you're growing closer to each other. And as you're doing life, you're growing closer together, you're growing closer to the Lord and you're just doing life together. And man, yeah. those times you, you, well, for me that I remember of doing that with <clears throat> different groups of friends is, you know, some of the closest times I've been to the, with the Lord, you know, was in college when, you know, we were on fire for this, you know, it's Bible studies on Monday nights, on Wednesday nights, on Thursday nights, on Saturday nights, yeah. on Sunday, you're at church and uh, you're doing life with your friends and you're yeah. doing that and you're seeking the Lord, man, you are on fire. And I'm saying, saying that I'm not on fire now, but those were the times <laughs> that I am, you know, well, we'll let you know if you, if we think you're on fire now, JP. <laughs> But, uh, you know, those are some of the times that I, I had some of the, the closest friends and yeah. some of the, the closest relationships. And man, life was just, uh, you know, life is good now and life is was good then. But uh, it's just uh, some moments that you think about and you're like, man, that was that was amazing. Well, I'm so excited for this because my wife and I, we've already actually been hosting a house church in our home mm-hmm. on and off just with our friends. And it's been super... <clears throat> incredible to see the people that would come yeah like not just people from our body and this is something we talked about in the wednesday night message and if you haven't watched it yet you need to go back and watch it we talk about the three things you need to get like an organic house church going in your home you need a host someone who's willing to just have people over you need um your friends just have your friends over yeah and you need something to watch the message on because we'll add the questions to it and then you can just fellowship eat food together potluck um, and go through the questions together. Chris, can I get a knock on my voice a little bit? Can't hear myself too well. Sorry about that, guys. Um, awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. But uh, another thing another thing is, is what I've loved about it is we've left space open to invite friends who are not part of the yeah. church. And that has been so cool, guys. I just want to encourage you. People are so willing and ready to come to a home and share mm-hmm. a meal, especially right now when they feel isolated and they need yeah. connection. I mean, Laura already told me she reached out to a friend and they were like, yeah, I, I'm interested to come to your house this Sunday and watch yeah. the service. And we've 
that's and that's not the first time you know we and we've had people to our house that don't go to our church or maybe aren't really walking with the lord as strongly and um and it's been so cool and i think this is an advantage for us as the body of christ to uh-huh. get aggressive about evangelism in our community because you got yeah. like you said you got your firefighter friends chances are not all of them are saved yeah it's, you know that is true and we all got co-workers and friends well i hope all my co-workers are saved <laughs> Um, but yeah. I got friends who aren't, you probably got yeah. friends and coworkers who aren't, or maybe family in the area yeah. who are feeling it, feeling isolated. And they would just love it. If you would just yeah. say, Hey, would you come over to my house? We're watching a message. We're doing it yeah. Tuesday night. We're doing it Sunday morning. Like you said, I love that. You can do it any point. Cause it's just, yeah. you're just grabbing the recording and sit down and go through it together and, um, share a meal. It was so meaningful. Yeah. And it just reminds me of, you know, um, when Luke Frechette was here and Adam Pearson were here, um, you know, they would go downtown and do street witnessing and stuff like that. And it was always like so tough for me to like, to go with them. I just was always just never, was never natural. Like those guys, those guys can go out there and and talk to anybody and share the gospel. But, you know, and that may not be you to be able to go out there and walk downtown Ashland and just start talking to people and, and, and sharing Jesus. And, uh, but you know, it is pretty simple to be able to ask a coworker, a neighbor, a friend, Hey, you want to come over and just watch church yeah. you know we're, we're doing life i got a group we're doing life together and uh this is our group this is what we do we meet you know on sundays or mondays or tuesdays whatever the day that you meet and uh and we're doing life together and we're growing in the lord <clears throat> and uh i think that you'd really enjoy to be a part of it and yeah and, and that's a simple way to ask somebody instead of going down the ta- you know downtown or on halloween or different events that are going on through ashland and you know just yeah. asking people you know um, there's the way of the master, which is an Adam Pearson thing that he liked to do. And Luke Frechette had his own way of sharing, you know, the Luke gospel. Luke Frechette's got his own yeah. way. I love it, man. It's so good. I love Luke so much. Yeah. Look so, up to that guy. So those were definitely, uh, uh, fun times. And, uh, but, uh, is this is just gives you a, a, an experience and, you know, can be so organic that, uh, you know, you just was like, Hey, you know, we're there. I know Pastor Mark has talked to just his neighbors about, you know, stuff and people are, are wanting that fellowship wanting to get together yeah and some people are afraid to come to church and so you know yeah. that's one thing to think about is you know it's easy to invite somebody over to your house um, yeah. and and then you know maybe they can become comfortable with coming to your house they get to know a couple of people from church and then yeah. it's much easier for them to bring their family or bring themselves to church what i what i love about this is this meets the genuine need for us to have deep meaningful connection yes that's walking in authenticity and walking in the light yeah. while still meeting the need that some people people have who are not in a place where they could come to big church and mm-hmm. i was just on the phone yesterday with a family from our church and they were just letting me know um that if we opened up they were, they're not going to be able to come because one of their household members uh, is just in really poor health in, in some ways and yeah it would be very <clears throat> vulnerable vulnerable and it was so great getting to share with them the house you're seeing and for them to be like you know i think we can do that yeah you know because they can they can pick the friends they're going to be with and and be careful that way and maybe for them they'll have a smaller group but it, it will work just fine and they can still have that deep meaningful connection um and i love it and i love what heather molzer said during our uh, wednesday night panel if you haven't watched it once again go back and watch it <laughs> but she said the beautiful thing is is for people especially if you're introverted it's just hard being in a giant room full of people yes. that you don't know very well but when you get to know people in house churches well then when you show up to church your friends are there and mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? That's so, you and I are both really extroverted people. We yeah. just love people. We're like, oh my yeah. gosh, there's 300 people here. That's why I love Costco. My heart was broken when Costco stopped serving samples. Broken. Um, because I love to talk to the sample people and get food. And it's just, I've had great experiences at Costco, just reaching out to strangers. Um, but for some people, that's not normal. No. They, and, and to think about coming to a gathering of 350 people and really connect, that's overwhelming. But making friends on a house church level and then being with them in a big service to them, yeah. that's the happy spot. And so I just love it. I think it's great. Yeah. I'm excited, uh, <clears throat> you know, f- to see what the Lord has and what the Lord's going to do with this. And I know that everybody's earning to come back to church, but I'm really excited to see what the Lord, you know, has to do um, with all of this and <clears throat> bringing those. Because when you find a group that you can do life with, man, Life yeah. just gets so much easier. And and finding a group, you know, that loves the Lord, you know, you can have your coworkers and you can have friends. But when you have 
friends that are doing life with you and have the same goals and love the Lord, oh my goodness, life is good. And when you bring your unsaved friends into that dynamic, that is what I love. I remember when our college ministry here uh, started, restarted. That's funny because you were part of it when it first started, right? You're part of the original, the OG college group. So then after that season, there was kind of that lull and then I came here. And it got restarted again on my on my living room floor. Just Laura and I was on a, kind of unintentional. The Lord yeah. just opened a door and college kids started eating chicken at our house and sitting on the floor. And it was like a house church. And it was so, so amazing. People weren't perfect, but people were genuine. We had people who were just coming back to the Lord yeah. or maybe you've saved a little bit longer, had no idea, had all these theological questions, didn't even know like, you know. It, some of the questions we have, we'll have to talk about it later. It was so funny. Yeah. I remember one one of the college kids asked me like, "Is adultery wrong?" No, is forn. He didn't know what it was. He's like, "Is it wrong to sleep with someone if they're not somebody else's spouse?" Because the Bible says adultery is wrong, but is is, is the other way okay? And my friend told me the Bible doesn't say anything about it. I'm like, actually, it does. You know? <laughs> well, it was, let's, we won't it go was, on that so much. But, yeah. but it was so it's so funny. It was a, a genuine <clears throat> time, and that's what house churches build. It builds that environment where people yeah. feel safe to say, "Hey, I just don't understand." What was so crazy is one of our church interns, um, this was before he was an intern, showed up to that meeting for the first time, wasn't going to a church, is not from a believing home, sat in on one meeting, our college group house church meeting, watched all the people. I had no idea he didn't know Christ because his friend didn't tell me. Saw it all and walked away and said, what these people have, I want. And he ended up getting yeah. saved a week later. And now he goes to our church faithfully as an intern here and... It's just, um, that's how God works. And so don't discount it. I love it. You get those people together that you can do life with and run with the Lord with, and you bring in your unsafe friends, and they see that, and they go, that is what I want. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and and life happens, and those friends you know, of that group, I'm sure that you still are in contact with a lot of people in that group. Not and, really. Not really. Only a few of them. Only a few of them. So you you know, you know, still have the relationships, but some of those people, you will become your closest friends. Yeah. And I would imagine that some of those people have been come, some of your closer friends here in Ashland. Well, but, but some of them moved away. But the yeah. thing is, if we were ever together again, that love would be there instantly. Yeah. You know I mean, it'd be like nothing disappeared. Yeah. I love it, dude. I'm so excited for house churches. Yeah. Get pumped. Get pumped for house churches. All right, churches. so here we go. We, got, we totally got distracted there and start preaching that's what happens when you have a pastor and an elder <laughs> and both are extroverts so let's, let's do it this way we're doing house churches people are getting stoked for it yes now how do how does this work though if i'm opening up my home for a house church and you just told me that we have COVID 19 in our community yes that's on the rise <clears throat> so i would definitely there's definitely things you know and if you didn't listen to uh the panel on wednesday i'd recommend listening to the panel for the third time go for back the third and listen time, to the panel <laughs> listen to the panel on there and uh um but what i've got written down and a couple of things is, is know know the symptoms and if you're sick and you you know you've been going to a house church for the last three weeks or two weeks or even one week and now you don't feel good you know know what symptoms that, that you know are there you know if you've got a fever you know every day before we go to work we get run into the the bay of the fire station and we check our our temperature so if we are yeah, over a forehead scanner yeah, for over 100 we go home for the day we don't we don't go to work um but so know the symptoms if you got a fever have you been tempted to take a super hot shower right before you go in <laughs> no i haven't but <laughs> we've definitely talked about stuff like that <laughs> Wear that, a bunch of jackets when you bunch get of jackets like, oh. or rub some uh, your coffee cup of, on your forehead. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but uh, know know the symptoms: fever, a cough, difficulty breathing. You know, um, it's for some people it could be like pneumonia. Some people could be like the common cold. Some people won't even have symptoms. So if you have any kind of symptoms, you just don't feel healthy. You don't feel good. You know, it's like man, I just kind of have an achy body. You know, stay home. Yeah, uh, err on the side of grace. Err on the side of grace. Err on the side of safety, and, and stay home. If you have any of those symptoms, is there? You know, things to think about when you go there is you know, you know, you can also help. You know, whoever's hosting that is you know is help them. You know, wipe things off. Wipe you know, door handles. You know, the bathroom. If you're willing to uh, help clean the bathroom after. Home church probably a good you know good idea. Yeah. Hopefully they cleaned it before you arrived there. Well, be a good guest. <clears throat> Wash your hands yeah. when you come in. Wash your hands, but it, it, those are those are all certain of the things that they're recommending that you're doing. You know is. Um, washing your hands. If you can't wash your hands, use uh, you know uh, alcohol um, or hand sanitizer with at least sixty percent alcohol in it. Um, you know, avoid close contact with people that are sick. So if you're if somebody at that house is sick, then 
you know, hopefully they'll call or they'll text and say, hey, we're not hosting a house church today. Um, well, it's not a bad idea because a lot of us have small kids. You know, yeah. my wife and I's first small kid is on the way and, yeah. you know, kids get sick all the time. Yeah. So maybe think about if you're the primary person hosting, maybe someone else in the group could be a backup host just in case yeah. like, oh, our kids got the whatever, the yeah. crud, you know, and say, like, OK, we'll just meet over here. Yeah. So it's just those things and, you know, cleaning and disinfecting, you know, surfaces that are, that are frequently touched. You know, if um, somebody's touching the, you know, grabbing water out of the sink, you know, and that gets touched five times, like people, you know, trying to wipe that off, trying to keep things clean, you know, um, they say groups of 25, you know, and a lot of houses aren't set up for hosting 25 people to keep people at that six foot distance. You know, they say if you can't be, you know, at that six foot distance or social distancing, you know, is to wear a mask. Well, maybe, maybe 70% of the people at your home church, you know, are comfortable not wearing a mask and you have the room and the space to that. But, you know, maybe that you think about that other 30%, you know, that, you know, is either immunocompromised or has, you know, yeah. some kind of health condition <clears throat> that is, is there, you know, also think about them, you know, don't look at the 1000 foot view, look at the 30,000 foot view of everything that's going on. And that's, I think one of the, the, the hard things to do is we look in this world so many times at the 1000 foot view, you know, we look and we can just see this one section, but, you know, take that overall picture of, you know, maybe somebody doesn't feel comfortable, you know, with everybody not wearing a mask. And so, for that one person, you wear a mask, you know, if there's six or seven people in your house and, you know, communicate with them and find out if that's something that <clears throat> you want to do or you can't have that social distancing, then that mask is there. And a lot of people think that the mask is there to protect them, but it's also, we don't know if we have COVID-19 or the coronavirus. We don't know if, if some of us, you know, healthy adults, healthy kids, you may not know that you even had the virus or got the virus and uh, or or dealing with it right now so that could help protect somebody else that's you know at your house yeah so without that maintaining that social distancing so well, those are I, some of the things that i would think that uh, yeah. we should look to or if you're hosting is things to there you know there's recommendations and we can <clears throat> add them off or i could read them off the well, and internet I, well too. i think what's so <clears throat> beautiful about this is the house church things is there's no one overlording you there's no mm -hmm. one like you don't have church elders coming to your door <laughs> you maybe be like are you social distancing you yeah. mean like measuring tape it out be like, all right you said on the church website that you had we saw your picture you had 10 people here this space doesn't look big for them all right no one is doing that we're all yeah. grown adults we're all mature yeah. people um and i think you got to know the comfort level of your group yeah. um a lot of the people in laura's and mine's home group they're younger healthier people um and because of that we have we don't wear masks like we have a we have a comfort level that's probably different than somebody mm -hmm. else who's maybe more at risk but we're also a group that you know like we have justin and jessa and their baby is right on the way and, and that's going to change the way our group operates you know we're having a brand new baby around mm -hmm. a couple months from now and you know my wife and i we're gonna have a brand new baby and some of our friends have a really young baby and, and that kind of just changes things as well so i think there's a lot of freedom to just kind of kind of Someone, I was just reading something somebody said the other day about thinking of others higher than yourself and just talking like JP said to your group, to your friends, say, hey guys, where are we at? What are we comfortable with? And what are you comfortable with? And, you know, I'm okay having <clears throat> these people in my life because we know and I know they're being responsible if they were on someone who was sick or whatever. So maybe in our group, we even feel comfortable sharing a meal together. Yeah. And we do, you know, and, and if for us, it's more normal than it is unnormal. But that's the comfort level of our group, you know, and I, and I think there's freedom. Like you said, if you had a group where there's a lot of people that were immunocompromised and you wanted to go a little bit stricter, hey, you know, the Lord yeah. bless you, whatever you want to do in your group, you know, there's freedom. Yeah, yeah. and <clears throat> there is a lot of freedom in that. And <clears throat> excuse me, the um, one last thing that just when you were talking that just clicked in my mind is like when you are over at those pieces, I mean, we learned a lot of the things that they're suggesting, you know, the CDC, we learned them at five years old, you know, wash your hands before you eat food. So, you know, if you're over at Cody and Laura's house and they've got food there, you know, go wash your hands. Especially because I'm incredibly <laughs> observant. I just want people to know that. Like, if you think you're picking your nose and no one sees, I want you to know that I actually saw it. Like, yeah. I'm just one of those super observing guys. Yeah. It's, it's the, it's, so wash your hands. Wash your hands. I mean, it's the, the, the simple things that, that we learned when we were little, you know, when, after you go to the bathroom, you wash your hands. Before you eat dinner, you wash your hands. When you're done with certain things, you wash your hands. You, you clean up, you know. 
you, um, you know, people take showers and baths and people, you know, it's like that, that good hygiene is, you know, a huge thing that uh, they say, you know, hand washing is probably one of the best ways to, to do that. And then yeah. after, you know, or if you haven't washed your hands and you don't have hand sanitizer, you know, really be cautious of you know, how many people put their hands in their mouth or touch their nose or touch their eyes. Well, especially. if you're serving a meal, maybe don't do something where everyone stick their hands and yeah. add tongs to it, you know, or something. Yeah. And, but uh, it's it's so there, you know, my wife is, is always just like, just think of the things, you know, like this. It's like, how, did you put your hand in your, your, your mouth today and stuff like that? And so I'm like, oh, well, don't do that, you know, and the, the, the things. Touching you your know, face <laughs> is so hard not to know, do, by the way. Yeah, it, it is very hard not to do. It's, you know, we're relearning stuff that we learned, you know, some of us you know, longer times than before, but it's, uh, we're relearning things and it's, uh, it's a good thing. I think it's good that people, you know, are doing better, you know, washing their hands and, uh, you know, cleaning up after themselves. And, uh, that's something that I think is, uh, well, a good thing. Well, let's be honest, it's polite <clears throat> etiquette. Like yeah. if you pick your nose, digging for gold <laughs> and you, you hit, you hit gold, you know, and yeah. you bring it out and then you stick your hand in the bowl of French fries. Chances are your hand touched some of the french fries that you didn't pull out. Yeah. Now there's french fries with gold on them <laughs> in that bowl. And if you got COVID-19, they, they just lucked out twice. They just got the yeah. lottery. They got uh, sick and they got your booger. On I'm their not sure fry. I would call it gold, but. <laughs> uh, I know we're playing. I know that's a gross metaphor. And some of you guys yeah. are like, oh my gosh. But that's the reality of it. It's just hey, good etiquette. You know? Yeah. You can eat a meal, wash your hand. Yeah. And, uh, you know, one thing that we've talked as, you know, church leadership and the pastors and elders is, uh, you know, lead by example, you know, is set that up there is, yeah, you know, if you did pick your nose and somebody saw you, go wash your hands. <laughs> but, or if you're, you're hosting at home is, you know, is, is lead by example, lead and go wash your hands, lead and, you know, just set the things up, lead and set, you know, if you can't do all that grab some hand sanitizers or you know have spare masks you know different yeah. things like that is kind of where i was trying to go with that kind of a little rabbit trail but it's made masks. it work <laughs> <laughs> so got a little distracted but that's, that's okay. happens squirrel uh, squirrel happens sometimes <clears throat> yeah happens so for people there really is no reason to be afraid right now you know i think if you know the lord there's uh, never a reason to there's be afraid. There's never a reason to be afraid. Amen. Um, Preach it, dude. And, uh, and people may, you know, say they've got fear of this or they've got fear of that. And, <clears throat> man, there's there's lots of things that you could be fearful of. Um, you know, I've got family members that are fearful of flying, and i got family members that are fearful of dying. i got family members that, you know, are fearful of heights. And, I hate and, heights, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, if you know the Lord, you know where you're going— um, you know, it is there, there's lots of different diseases. Um, and we know as a church and as a body that we've seen, you know, we've seen cancer come through there. We've seen illnesses, sicknesses, diseases come through and, and uh, you know, take people's lives. And, uh, we want to make sure that they knew the Lord and they know where they're going. Um, but you know, to be fearful is that I would say to just be cautious. I wouldn't use fearful as the word, but just be cautious and, and, you know, there are things that you can do to limit your exposure, limit your um, opportunities of that you know, hanging out with sick people. Not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so you have somebody that's known COVID or they've traveled on a cruise recently. Probably not a good idea to go hang out with them. Um, but to be fearful, we're doing a really good job in Jackson County, um, you know, over the last three months, pretty much 65 cases, pretty much 15 of them in the last two weeks as we kind of open things back up. Um, but we still need to do a good job and, uh, fearful, I think is a word that we probably don't need to use. You know, the media is, is trying to do that. Trying to make people afraid. But, uh, you know, knowing the Lord and, and, uh, this will be me getting nice of us. If you don't know the Lord, come talk to us. Yeah. We yeah. want to come share to the house gospel. Church. Come to house church. We want to share the gospel with yeah, you. You don't have to live in fear. You don't have to live in fear. And, uh, man, it's, yeah, it's, it is nice knowing the Lord. Yeah. And you know what? Um, we want to walk in wisdom. And I think that yeah. is biblical. You, you yeah. read the book of Proverbs, you see Paul saying, he need to walk circumspectly, right? Because time is short. The Lord's at hand and we got a mission to do. Yes. And that's really our heart as a church in this. Like we want to walk and wisdom. And I, I just want to share a little tidbit to the body. I think it's um 
it's off topic a little bit, but I think the greatest threat for our church is not COVID-19. No. COVID-19 is not going to stop our church. Um, the greatest threat for our church is disunity. It is letting our polarized feelings get in the way where we start to look at each other like the enemy. And let me, let me make something really clear. That's actually the work of the enemy. It's the oh, work when, when, when brothers and sisters in Christ look at one another and say they're the enemy. That's the, <clears throat> that's the work of Satan. And it divides yeah. a church and it divides families and it divides yeah. friends. And that's, man, that's not the work of God because the work of the Lord is unity. Yeah. In fact, the spirit of God, the, his work in our lives is unity. And it's yes. peace and it's the bond of love. And so I'd encourage people, I know this the time is hard. I yeah. know it's been difficult, but we got to endure and we got okay, we got to remember that we are yeah. in this together and we got to endure it together. And that means putting up with one another and our different views. It means putting up with one another and our different perspectives yeah. and being gracious and forgiving and understanding <clears throat> towards one another. And, and we all need it because right now I know we're all just trying to seek the Lord yeah. and be led by him. And sometimes it's not always the answer we want. Yeah. I was reading the, I was reading the book of Exodus last night. And the Lord told Moses to go camp at uh, Pi Hiiroth, I think is how you say it, by the Red Sea. The Lord told Moses to take the children of Israel and go camp by the Red Sea to put them in, want to believe it or not, a trap. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going to draw Pharaoh and his armies and I'm going to have a victory over Pharaoh and I'm going to gain glory and honor and all the Egyptians will know that I'm the only God and they're going to fear my name. That's all the details he gave Moses. So Moses takes them down there and they camp. And yeah. then guess what? Egypt shows up with an army, with chariots, and, and they're screaming down the wilderness towards them, and they're stuck. There's nowhere to run. You got Pharaoh, you have the wilderness, and you have the Red Sea. And the people, they get upset. Yeah. And they're like, Moses, what is the matter with you? <laughs> like, yeah. you, there's no graves in Egypt, so you brought us here to die? And I think it's so incredible because Moses tells the people, like, hey, we just got to be confident and trust that God is leading us. Like, God's brought us here. He's got this under control. Yeah. You're not going to have to be afraid of these guys any longer. And when Moses turns and the Lord speaks to him, the Lord actually tells him, he says, Moses, he says, why do the people cry out to me? What are you guys concerned about? You need to move forward. He's like, take the people and move forward. <laughs> forward yeah now forward is the red sea backwards is the army and to the sides would be the wilderness so your options are run for your life your option which isn't going to work because the wilderness was merciless that's why god had to bring water out of the rocks and quail to feed them and manna i mean that you you were not going to make it yeah your other option is, is you attack the egyptians which they're in chariots and you could fight you could fight as much as you want but they weren't going to be victorious God's, God's response to him was, I want you to move forward. I have a plan. You just got to keep moving forward in it. And yeah. he's like, and stretch out your arm over the water. And it's just such a powerful story. Jesus in the cloud comes sweeping in and divides yeah. Israel from Egypt. And he delivers his people. And God sends this east wind to drive the waters back. And the children of Israel, you know the story, cross through. And then when the Egyptians do, God defeats them and crushes them. And I just want to encourage you guys. Sometimes when the Lord has a plan, sometimes when he's speaking to us, it's not what we wanted to hear. I bet yeah. you when Moses turned around to the people and he goes, guys, the Lord has spoken to me. And they're like, okay, good. Good, all right. Because Pharaoh is coming down the hill and we're surrounded by <laughs> desert. And then there's like a no small ocean right here, Moses. What do you got? And Moses goes, the Lord says, move forward. <laughs> yeah. I imagine they were all like, <laughs> "Yeah, we're going to die. <laughs> in fact, later on in the narrative, they actually say, if you go to the end of Moses' life, end of Israel's life, when they're at the border of the promised land, they actually say, you know what? We need to appoint ourselves a new leader and go back to Egypt. Yeah. That's a sad thought, but you know what? The, we, we all feel those feelings. Those are yeah. real feelings. But the reality is, is right now more than ever, we need to be united. Yeah. And if the Lord is saying, guys, the plan is move forward, then we can't look at yeah. the army. We can't look at the wilderness. We just got to say onward. It's unknown. It, it is a sea of uncertainty. I was like, that's very Ben Corson, John Corson to say. The sea of uncertainty. It's the Red yeah. Sea, but that was the Lord's way forward, and it was the way to victory. So I don't know. I've been encouraged by that. I hope that stirs you up. The Lord's speaking to me through that last night. Mini sermon in the midst of a podcast. Yeah. My bad. <clears throat> I liked it. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, just with that right there, it just reminds me of, you know, our, of that thought of, you know, the church leadership, the pastors, the elders, and all of the staff, you know, they're trying to move us forward. And yeah. uh, they're trying to do their best of going up that 30,000 view and looking over <clears throat> the body. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're up 30,000 feet looking over the body and trying to do what's best. And it may not be 
what one person wants to hear or what one person thinks is the right thing to do or it may there but they're trying to look at that overall what's the best for the body and and i ask you during that time of them trying to figure everything out and go through this is just the one word that you know when we learned uh kyla and i in our premarital counseling uh it was you know if you could do one thing and it was just be kind and that's always stuck with me um from the guy that the family that did our premarital counseling is be kind. And, uh, and I've always just thought of that as, you know, be kind now, be kind in the future, be kind always. And, uh, you know, we're trying to take all of the information in and we're trying to, to move forward, yeah. but, uh, just be kind as we're trying to do what's best for the body. Well, I'm super excited. <clears throat> I just gotta be honest. The word that's burning in my heart is just move forward. Yeah. I believe that's the Lord for us right now. And we just got, I don't know what God's doing. Um, if you would have asked me if I thought I would see a pandemic in my lifetime, if you asked me I, if I thought the NFL would shut down, <laughs> you know what I mean, and NASCAR yeah. and all these other things, I probably yeah. wouldn't have believed you. But this is where the Lord has us, and I believe that if he has us here, it's for a victory for his people. Yeah. And so we just got to move forward in faith and say, all right, Lord, you're leading this thing, and right now yeah. we believe you've set house churches, and we're going to do that, and we're going to keep moving forward, and, and who knows how the sea's going to part, who knows how God's going to make yeah. things work, but I'm excited for it. Yeah, I, I'm excited and I uh, am super thankful to be a part of this church and just to see what the Lord's doing uh, in you and Pastor Mark and Brad. And <clears throat> it's been it's been fun and I'm super excited to see, you know, where the Lord takes us, you know, in this next season, you know, with the uh, the home churches, with coming back and the body getting together. Yeah, I can't you wait. Know, <clears throat> You know, earlier today, somebody asked me today is, you know, well, as things change and we, we're in phase one and we can do social distancing, can we have large groups outside? We have this beautiful outdoor area and it's we're like, looking forward to it. we're looking forward to it just as we're, we're learning and we're trying to gather all of the information t- to make, you know, the best decisions for our body. So be patient, be kind. And, yeah. uh, we love you guys out there and pray for us. Yeah. You know? oh, yeah. We pray for you. Pray for us. <laughs> You know, yeah. and um, yeah, I'm excited. I, you know, God is so good and so faithful, and I know He's got a plan in all of this somehow. Yeah. You know, and I, that's what I love about the book of Revelation. I've loved studying this little ready or not, <laughs> here I come thing that we've been yeah. doing because you really get to see God's got a master plan in all of it. Yeah. All of it. And how COVID 19 plays into that, maybe we won't know this side of heaven. But I, everyone I've talked to just really senses that God has a purpose for this and yeah. it's moving the world in the direction He wants it to go. To yeah. bring about his <clears throat> result, his plan. Yeah. And we, you know, we as people want to know, you know, we want to know what's next. We want to <laughs> yeah. know, you know, we want to have the plan. You know, there are, are planners out there and they want it, you know, written down of, you know, this is going to happen and this is going to happen and this is going to happen and this is going to happen. And, you know, I, uh, I wish I did know. The yeah. planner. I did. I wish I knew why this happened. I wish I knew what was going on. And, and you know, sometimes we just got to trust in the Lord and we got to take that, that step of faith, you know. Well, that's turning <laughs> me up. And I'm, I want to go back to that uh, Exodus passage because the Lord told Moses that he was going to have this victory over Egypt. Mm-hmm. But the Lord didn't give him any of the details. And no. I laughed. I laughed. I thought that <laughs> yeah. was so funny. But I was reading that last night. The, could, would Moses have believed mm. him? Yeah. If God was like, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go camp here. I'm going to draw out the Egyptians. It's going to get really hairy for a second. Like, you might think you're going to die, and then I'm going to divide it with a cloud, and then I'm going to call in the wind. We're going to divide this sea, and you're going to cross through it, and I'm actually going to stop them, kind of trouble their chariots, and then crash it down. But you guys are all going to make those. I mean, that's kind of elaborate. Yeah. You know, and I think, and God's also developing something in us. He just gave Moses a step. Like Moses go there. And so Moses is confident, you know, when, yeah. when, the, when the people are like scared, he goes, God's going to give us this great victory. And I wonder what Moses felt when God goes, all right, Mo- all right, Moses, I want you to move forward yeah. and part the Red Sea. I wonder if he was like, yeah, th- that's, that's the plan. Yeah. Like we're going to, I'm going to raise up my stick and you're going to part a sea. Yeah. You know, I wonder if he did it confidently. I wonder if he was kind of like just a little shy, you know, kind of like putting his stick up like, all right. Everyone's like, what's yeah. he doing? You know, yeah. it's like, all right. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I like to imagine Moses just confidently, you know, putting his arm up and being like, we're going forward. That's what I was imagining last yeah. night. Um, it's, as I know, it doesn't always play out that way. You yeah. know, he's probably more like, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, and I love it. And to be honest, I don't think God's given us all the details of what he has for us here yet. No. I can tell you that as a church leader, we have been praying, we have been fasting, weeks of prayer and fasting, asking yeah. the Lord, and the Lord has been speaking to us 
but it's in increments. Yeah. You know, God, this year, clearly, like we were just as a leadership, you were there talking about harvest out of the week of prayer mm-hmm. and fasting and how the Lord wanted to, wants to see people saved this year. And we, we believed he had something special for us. And here we are like harvest is coming. <laughs> we're so excited. And then COVID-19 hit. Yeah. And you know what? And we can feel like that was such a loss. But part of me is actually wondering, God, God didn't stutter. If yeah. he told us a harvest was coming, <clears throat> then yeah. COVID-19 was a part of that plan. Yeah. And, and what God's speaking to us now with house churches, I just feel like God's given us incremental yeah. information yeah. that our faith can handle. And we just got to raise the rod and say, we're going yeah. forward, you know, and we're just, we're pushing into the unknown, but we're believing it's that people are going to get saved, that a decisive victory is going to be won for the people of God. Yeah. And just right now, my, my brain of, you know, I've got family members and friends that, you know, have walked away from the Lord and, you know, is COVID-19 something that is stirring their heart to, you know, turn around. God's following them right behind them. Yeah. But, you know, is that something that is there or is that the opportunity for me, you know, whether they're kind of lonely or at home by themselves or something like that to invite them to my house and uh, come over and do a home church with me until we can get back to the, you know, together as a body. Yeah. And just kind of that, that just was like kind of stern of, you know, different people to invite over and, uh, you know, talk about what's going on. Yeah. Gets me excited. We're, we're moving <clears throat> forward, guys, and we're doing it together. We're going to yeah. do this together, and I'm so excited for it. Yeah. JP, is there any closing thoughts you had as we're wrapping it up? Has it been about 40 <laughs> minutes, Chris? 51. 51. 51. Woo, we, we got <clears throat> preachy in yeah. there. <laughs> um, it's just, the, it just it hits home, and I'm just thinking about it again, is, is uh, things are stressful. We've got lots of roller coaster emotions, and... Uh, it's just a different time that some of us have never experienced, and uh, yeah. and just be kind. Uh, be yeah. kind when you're at the grocery store. Be word. kind when you're getting gas. Be kind when you're on, you know, <clears throat> the internet or social media. Be kind when you, you know, you're talking with your family. Just yeah. take that and just just be kind. You know, um, I think that's one of the things that you know. I just feel like that the Lord's laying right there is is uh, there's so many opportunities to be so different right now and so polarizing and things happening is is uh, just to, to the simple words of be kind. Yeah. Amen, man. I love it. Well, okay, guys, we love you. Yes. We're super excited to be in this with you together. <laughs> um, love all of you guys. Remember, we got to endure it, but God's working. God's doing something. And I'm excited to see how it all ends. Yes. Thanks for joining us, JP. I got a feeling we're going to have you back on. You're really easy to talk to. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Yeah, it was great, dude. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks for joining us today. I know you're super busy. And yeah, be praying for all of our first responders too that are just need God's yeah. wisdom and working daily. And COVID-19 is the mm-hmm. least of your problems most yeah. days, I'm guessing. And uh, <laughs> pray, pray for everybody that's out there working, you know, not just your first responders and your people at the hospital, but, you know, we've got people that are at the grocery stores, at the gas station, you know, and they're out and they're out doing it and they've been working through this whole pandemic and, uh, you know, pray for all the people that are out there working. There's different um, essential employees that you could call them. There's different people that are out there and it's a different time. So yeah, not just, not just for a certain groups, pray for our nation, pray for Amen. our workers, pray for people as the America comes back into phase one and two. And as we continue to move forward. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Have a wonderful hey, day. Feel free to leave us a comment, reach out. I'd uh, love to hear from you. God bless. God bless, and I'm not an expert at everything.